Board of Education meeting for which adequate notice under the Open Public Meetings Act was provided by written notice on January 5th, 2017 to the Courier News, the Echo Sentinel, the Star Ledger, Tap into Warren, and the clerks of the borough of Watchon and the townships of Greenbrook, Long Hill, and Warren. Roll call, please, Mr. Size. Ms. Barone? Here. Mr. Collins? Here. Mr. Mizio? Here. Fahey? Mr. Fechner? Here. Mr. Hunsinger? Here. Mr. Martins? Here. Master Batista? Here. Dr. Shabilsky? Here. Mr. Morris? Here. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with the provisions of the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Act, be it hereby resolved that the board move into executive session to discuss confidential personnel and student matters after which action may be taken. It is expected that the matters discussed in the executive session will be made public as soon as the need for confidentiality no longer exists. May I have a motion, please? So moved. All right. Off we go. Thank you all for coming out tonight. We'll continue on with our agenda. Uh, Ms. Druitt, no board correspondence? No, no board correspondence. Great. First item that we'll take on is uh, reports and presentations. And before I turn it over to the superintendent, I'd like to uh, just open with a comment. Uh, the reason why we're here this evening is to recognize two of our students uh, for some extraordinary efforts that they, uh, that they went to uh, on behalf of one of their fellow students. Uh, on the morning of January 19th, Watchung Hills Regional High School student Sarah Magaldo passed out while on one of the events on our Project Adventure course. Project Adventure teacher Thomas Leffler and the two students who had just completed their EMT training, Andrew Zimmer and Emma Reedman, started CPR until an AED could uh, be arrived and administered to the student. Our school resource officer, Joe Casario, along with Mrs. Valerio and Mrs. Clark, the school nurses, were on the scene to assist until the ambulance arrived to take Sarah to Overlook Hospital. It was made clear by the doctors at Overlook that the actions of Andrew and Emma, Mr. Leffler, Officer Casario, nurses Valerio and Clark, had saved Sarah's life. She is here with us tonight, and we're so happy that she is. This is particularly a happy ending to a story that has a very significant and meaningful background to it. On August 10th, 2006, an 11-year-old named Janet Zielinski, a resident of Warren, suddenly passed away due to sudden cardiac arrest following cheerleading practice. Out of their unimaginable grief, Janet's parents, Karen and Jim, who are with us this evening, were committed to seeing that all schools and youth facilities were outfitted with proper equipment and training that would keep another family from having to suffer this type of incredible loss. Assemblyman Bramnick, who's here with us tonight, led the charge by introducing and ushering a bill through the state legislature that took more than six years, which was finally signed by Governor Christie on September 21st, 2012, creating Janet's Law. Janet's law requires all public and non-public schools to have automated external defibrillators and calls for schools to establish emergency action plans to, res to respond to sudden cardiac events in order for them to be as prepared as possible to deal with these life-threatening emergencies. The law went into effect for the 2014 and 2015 school year. Now, two years ago, the Mahal family from Warren, who were very close with the Zelenskys, donated several AEDs to Wachung Hills in Janet's memories. And the Zelenskys joined us on that same evening when this board adopted Janet's law uh, as part of our school policies. Now, the unfortunate passing of Janet, who many of us consider very much a part of our class of 2013, and who would have been a college senior this year, has demonstrated how one family's tragedy can lead to another family's triumph. Who could have ever imagined that the implementation of the law in Janet's name would play such an important role in saving the life of one of our own students, Sarah Magaldo? Andrew and Emma and Mr. Loeffler and our school nurses were in a position to help save Sarah's life because of their EMT training and the gift that Janet gave to all of us the efforts of the Zelinsky family and of Assemblyman Bramnick to make Janet's law a reality, 
the efforts of our school resource officer and our police department, the efforts of our EMTs and our fire department, and all supported by the leadership of Mayor, Car Mayor uh, Carol Ann Garofalo and our township committee. This paints a true picture of a community working together for our common good. At a time when there's been so much attention to all that is wrong with our nation, this gathering here this evening and this remarkable community celebration is a testament to all that is right. Superintendent, I'd like to have you continue on with the presentations. Thank you, Mr. Morrison. <clears throat> I am going to read, so I try not to forget uh, the, the number of people that I want to acknowledge and thank, uh, many of whom Mr. Morrison already mentioned. Uh, including our two guests of honor, senior students, uh, Emma Reedman and, and Andrew Zimmer. It's truly difficult to find the words to express what I know is mine, the entire board, and the entire district's gratitude um, to all of you that helped on January 19th. And I we do want to acknowledge Sarah and her family. We could not be happier that you are here with us tonight and that, Sarah, that you have a long, healthy life ahead of you. And we even, you know, I told her we even shortened the day today for her just to ease her, you know, back into school, <laughs> make, give her a snow day later in the week. So, um, but we really are happy to see you here tonight. I apologize in advance as I am confident that I'm going to miss um, acknowledging personally some of the people that were, were directly involved that day, um, but I am going to try and do my best. There are some folks that I would like to, to single out by name. Uh, that really helped in some capacity uh, during that day. So first I would like to start with the members of the Warren Police Department, uh, specifically our school resource officer, Joe Casario, Sergeant Rob Ferrero, Officer Robert Apisa, Officer Kevin Ola, Atlantic Ambulance EMS-8 and Mercy-6 paramedics, um, and a number of our staff members who will be recognized in front of their peers at tomorrow's faculty meeting also assisted on the scene, including security personnel Joseph Coyote, our Director of Security Chris Shea, and Nurse Mary Beth Clark. Additionally, as Mr. Morrison had mentioned, our physical education teacher, Mr. Thomas Loeffler, immediately assessed the situation, provided direction to his students, and summoned medical assistance. And Nurse Angela Valerio took over administration of CPR to the student um, and attended to the student until the arrival of additional medical personnel. Now I would like to speak a bit about Emma and Andrew who showed tremendous composure, leadership, and care for their fellow classmate when they immediately stepped into action and began administering CPR, um, putting to use everything they had learned in their CPR training and as volunteer members of the fire department. The teamwork of our students, our staff, the emergency responders, the doctors at the hospital, our legislators like Assemblyman Bramnick, private citizens who work to make the world a better place for others, such as Mr. and Mrs. Zielinski, it truly underscores the importance of education and all of the collaboration toward a common goal for the greater good. Um, so now I would like to read proclamations from the board uh, for Andrew and Emma. So I'm actually going to ask the two of you if you could come over to the podium. If you don't mind, I am going to put you on the spot. <laughs> I'm sure you are used to this by now. I um, had the, the opportunity to speak with Andrew and Emma. I'm going to turn this around so I can read them, and I'm going to have you face them, because they're the ones who want to see you more than me. Um, but I had the opportunity to speak with them uh, a, a couple of weeks ago. And actually, um, Chief Keene came over to, uh, to speak with them as well. And do you mind if I just share some of what um, you had said to them? That, that really, it, it, re uh, it really sat with me where um, the police chief had, you know, had was telling them how he had administered CPR 30 times, I believe he said. in. I have to, <laughs> in his career. And he um, had said to them, because he really wanted to impress upon them the impact of, of what they had done. And he asked them, you know, how many of those people do you think survived? And so, you know, we're guessing 25, 5, 10, 2. And he said none. Um, because he explained to Andrew and Emma that a lot of the times, by the time the police get there or the emergency responders get there, it's often too late. Um, so the fact that they stepped into action as quickly as they did without even giving a second thought, um, it really, it, it made a difference, you know, I think more than they could have even anticipated. And so, um, you know, that really stuck with me, um, and I'm in awe of, of both of them. And so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm truly grateful that you were there on that day where you were, as I'm sure, you know, a lot of other people are. Um, so just a small token on behalf of the board, I would like to read the two resolutions that we prepared uh, for Emma and Andrew. This proclamation regarding Ms. Emma Reedman shall be read at the public meeting of the Watchung Hills Regional High School Board of Education on February 7, 2017. 
Whereas Emma Reedman has served as a volunteer firefighter for the Warren Township Fire Department since the ninth grade, and whereas she completed her EMT certification and has served on Watchung Borough Rescue Squad since the 11th grade, and whereas through her training and life-saving skills, she selflessly and without hesitation came to the assistance of another student in need of emergency medical assistance during physical education class, and whereas she played a key role in saving the life of the student by promptly assessing the situation and administering CPR until the nurses and rescue squad arrived. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Watchung Hills Regional High School Board of Education expresses its sincere gratitude to Emma Reedman for coming to the assistance of another student in a time of crisis and wishes her the very best in success in her future studies in the field of medicine. Thank you. And next we have Andrew. I'll give these two so you can take them home. Thank you. The procl this proclamation regarding Mr. Andrew Zimmer shall be read at the public meeting of the Watching Hills Regional High School Board of Education on February 7, 2017. Whereas Andrew Zimmer has served as a volunteer firefighter for the Warren Township and Greenbrook Township Fire Departments, and whereas he has served as lifeguard for the Somerset Hills YMCA, and whereas, through his training and life-saving skills, he selflessly and without hesitation came to the assistance of another student in need of emergency medical assistance during physical education class. And whereas, he played a key role in saving the life of the student by promptly assessing the situation and administering CPR until the nurses and rescue squad arrived. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Watchung Hills Regional High School Board of Education expresses its sincere gratitude to Andrew Zimmer for coming to the assistance of another student in a time of crisis and wishes him the very best and success in his future endeavors in the field of construction. And I'm going to use this opportunity to uh, change up the agenda, seeing that we have such a, a, a turnout this evening. I'm going to open it up for the first opportunity uh, for public comment. The first opportunity for public comment period will be limited to agenda items for this meeting only. The second public comment period will be open to any topic. All comments are limited to five minutes. So anyone who wishes to comment, please come up to the podium and state your name and uh, city. Yes. Yeah. Anyone have any comments? Please come up to address this specific event or anything else. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. President, Superintendent, Mayor, uh, distinguished guests, you know, there are very few moments uh, in our lives that bring us all together and prove what an incredibly strong and warm society we have. Let me start with the Zelenskys. We spent six years uh, making sure that that tragedy would never happen again. And the Zelenskys informed me that 16 lives have been saved since the Zelensky law, the Janus law, went into effect. And tonight is evidence that we have incredibly strong and generous youth, incredible leadership in this town, and just a warm and caring student body as well as staff. So on behalf of the state of New Jersey, Sarah, we love you. We're glad you're here. Thank you, Assemblyman, and thank you for all your leadership on this and other important issues regarding our towns and education. Other comments? Well, um, I'm Jim Zielinski. Uh I won't be as eloquent as Assemblyman Bramnick, but I will say this. Uh, when Sarah's uh, father called us, or called me, I should say, uh, this week on Monday, um, 
it was a conversation that was both very happy for me, uh, and, but the ironic part was you had two grown men sitting there crying on the phone to each other. Because the fact is that everything we fought for for those six years came to fruition and it came right back home. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's what's, what the law was meant to do. We knew it would work. And like Assembly Bramick uh, talked about, 16 lives are here um, because of that law. And I'd like to think that my daughter uh, is watching over every single one of them. And um, like I said this hour before, there's a reason why. And uh, there's a plan for you. So we are so happy and um, so thankful that it's a good story this time. Because a lot of times it's not. And uh, school and students are to be commended for jumping into action. So from the bottom of our hearts, thank you for doing what you did. And thank you for the community being so supportive of us for all these years. Thank you. Any other comments? Excellent. We're a team here, so I invite uh, <laughs> Deputy Mayor right. Dillo to come up. Uh, first of all, um, I was very moved when I heard about what had happened. I had actually heard uh, about this young lady being saved uh, when I was at a Boy Scout meeting and um, then heard about our police officers, our fire department. I can tell you from personal experience, uh, because I'm, I am executive director of Mount Bethel Village, uh, they come quite often to my building for different reasons. We did lose a woman this summer. Uh, my staff had been trained in CPR. We have an AED actually on each floor. Um, unfortunately, we lost her, and I can't even imagine uh, what it is like for any family member for that to happen to. Uh, I'm very proud to be a resident in Warren Township, to see a community such as this come, uh, such as people come together like this, and what we have all done for each other, because that's what really counts. And Assemblyman Bramnick, thank you for leading the charge on what you did. Dick? Well, I have to tell you, this is a, a touching moment for me. I know the Zelensky's, I was so personally hurt when I heard what happened to your daughter because I got on my police call and I, it's just unbelievable that anything like it could happen. And the fact that it, it, it was prevented from happening again because of what you've done, uh, I, I, I have to tell you, Karen and Jim, you great people, you've done a great job. And, uh, and also, you know, miracles don't just happen by accident. Miracles happen through humanity. And the young people who uh, stepped into action to save Sarah's life, it's fantastic. And uh, I, I am the Tufts University alumni rep for this area, so I interview a lot of students. And I got to tell you, having that on your resume, uh, life saving is going to go a long way. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Other comments? Uh, Terry McConnell, Vice Principal. Um, I just want to say that I was um, eight feet away when this was all go happening, and I, I couldn't go any closer because I'm thinking as a dad, thinking I have a daughter, and that's my daughter. And um, what, what they did, what Emma and uh, Andrew did was just unbelievable. The other kids who were there just, and I, I kept hearing them say, come on, Sarah, come on, Sarah, Sarah, come on, come on, come on. It was just, um, it brought tears to your eyes. And I said to Ms. Magaldo, I, I, I couldn't make the phone call to her because I know I would start crying the first, because uh, I didn't know what to say. So luckily, Mr. Sifros, uh took over. But again, it just shows the type of kids that we have. And, 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 and there's no better place than Marching Hills and our student body. And again, they are uh, outstanding individuals. Uh, Sarah, we love you. And uh, if it would have been me there, the first one, I'm not sure the story would be the same. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Other comments? Hi, I'm Mike McGaldo, and this is my wife, Sandy. Um, Sarah's our daughter, obviously. Uh, I don't have anything prepared, and I think I'd be remiss if I didn't get up here and say thank you to Emma and Andrew. Uh, the Zelensky's uh, first responders, um, thank you um, for your efforts, the Watch Up Hill staff, um, just thank you for 
saving my little girl. The only reason she's here today is because of people in this room, and I'm eternally grateful to all of you that were there. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, I'm going to take this opportunity for us to celebrate the way that this board likes to celebrate. And we're going to take a break, and we have some cake over here. <laughs> and we can socialize for a few minutes before we get on with the rest of our official meeting. So take uh, a few minutes here. <laughs> Moving on, the next item on our agenda is the 2017-2018 preliminary budget presentation. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Stimes, we'll turn it over to you, please. This will uh, this will bring us all back down, huh? <laughs> you know? Don't bring me down. Yeah. I had to follow that. I mean, really? I guess I didn't plan that too well. <laughs> okay. Welcome to the folks that are still here. Um, at this point in time, what we typically do is we just kind of go through some of the things that we're seeing in, as we're preparing the budget. Uh, we won't get into hardcore numbers and, and that kind of thing, but just to give you a plan of where we are, uh, what the budget cycle is in terms of our public uh, uh, presentations, and also some of the things that we've seen uh, with our revenues and our appropriations. So I'll start out, I think my slide thing was moved around a little bit, so let me go back a little bit. I'll start out by thanking and acknowledging our Board of Education, uh, who does an awful lot to help us with our various committees. We talk about budget in all of our committees. Um, so. Yeah, whereas the operation committee does most of the work with um, the numbers, there are other committees that are also contributing to uh, the education experience and also the personnel. Uh, we talk about policy, so everything gets put together and the Board of Education as a group contributes to the budget process. Uh, in our timeline, we typically start in October. We gather data from our supervisors, uh, from community sources, and from that point through December, even we're <coughs> even still gathering information, uh, we put together uh, requests and information from our uh, educators. Uh, in January, on January 27th, in and about that time, we receive our budget guidelines, and that kind of triggers um, our one of our biggest revenue items, we have a send-receive relationship with Greenbrook Board of Ed. We receive seven, approximately $7 million of revenue from them, and we have to kind of come together and figure out rates, which is on our um, uh, agenda tonight. But we also have to figure out the number of students that are coming here from Greenbrook, and we work together closely with the Greenbrook Board of Ed pretty much all year long but even more so in January and February to come across those numbers that we're projecting for next year. Uh, February 28th is the state budget address. Uh, we receive our state aid two days later. We, do a, uh, we, we distribute our, our large preliminary budget booklet to the Board of Education on March 7th. And on March 21st, we do our budget presentation uh, for county review. And then our final public hearing is on August 25th. Um, these are our strategic plan goals. They are on our website. Uh, a large part of our budget process is those goals. All of our supervisors get those goals. So they, they are aware that if they're adding things, they must adhere to that. Uh, and we try to closely involve um, all of our administrators with the, with the planning goals and the committees to make sure that we're following what the board has put together um, our enrollment, which is a big number, we have, to, we have to acknowledge that we are losing enrollment and we do have the sliding board going downhill there. Um, our high mortar mark was 2231 and 1415 school year. We've been steadily dropping. It looks a lot worse on the slide, but 
Uh, it's you know talking about 50 or 60 kids per year that we've been dropping, and we 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 are looking at a. Uh, uh, even uh, more of a decline next year, the, the following year, 1819. We are looking to do another demographic study with our sending districts so we can get updated information. We are, our current one goes out to 1819 and it's just under 2,000 students. Um, some of the revenue things that we're, we're looking at, uh, typically the 2% budget cap is about $586,000. That's the new dollars that we can spend uh, on a $44 million budget. That's not a lot of money. Um, your salaries and benefits, which are close to, close to 70% of the budget, um, the, we're projecting a benefit increase of 11%, and salaries is 2.6%, just to give you some scale. So that's always a challenge for us. Uh, minimal state aid. We receive less than $900,000 in state aid uh, net. So that means most of our revenues are from the property taxes of the three communities. And of course, the Greenbrook tuition. Uh, we estimate it to be flat. There's also rumors of a statewide cut, uh, which is it's always a concern. In 2009, we lost quite a bit. And I did put that graphic up on the slide, not the graphic, but just a little bullet point. Uh, 08 09, our state aid was $1.7 million. That was in 08 09. We are now at $871,000. So we haven't even gotten back to where we were in 08 09. Uh, the send received tuition, that's the thing I was discussing before. Uh, we're, we have a projected rate increase from 15 3 to 15 8. Uh, we had an unfavorable adjustment. We, we actually have to take our actual dollars versus our estimated dollars for last year, 15-16. So we owe three, Greenbrook $300,000, and that's, um, that's netted against the tuition for next year. But that, that, puts us, that puts us a little behind the eight ball. We lost $300,000 of revenue. Um, but I, I also want to point out, you know, Realistically, we've overcharged them for $300,000, so we owe them the money. So, so I, want to be, I want to be kind to our Greenbrook folks. Um, we have a reserve of 150000 to offset that $300,000. Uh, also, use of capital reserves. Uh, we, do, we are going to supplement the final phase of our 2013 referendum project, which is the South Cafeteria, uh, with $700,000 in referendum funds. I mean, I'm sorry, $700,000 in um, capital reserves and also uh, one of the things that we talked about last year when we did our uh, our turf field was that we were going to use local dollars in the form of capital reserve to pay the principal portion of the turf field bonds which we are planning to do in next year's budget which will be July uh, <coughs> key appropriations I mentioned it already the teachers contract is 2.6 percent uh, the health benefits, is, we're looking at an 11% increase. Um, we're hoping that'll come in lower, but as of right now, it's 11% based on claims. Uh, and we, um, that's always, like I said, it's always a challenge in that 2% budget cap to try to fit that in. Uh, the capital needs is, is, is consistently a tough situation for us. Uh, one, a lot of the schools, and we talked about this in operations, it's one of the tougher areas to maintain in a school district right now with a 2% cap and again $580,000 increase that's all you're allowed it's very very difficult to put in large projects like gym locker rooms in 7 and 8 and 3 4 tennis courts which are <coughs> over 30 years old uh, the, the, what we call the band field which is right out front which is like Rocky Mountain out there Th those projects, to fit them in, that 2% cap is a very, very difficult proposition. A lot of the schools have gone to referendum. That's one of the things they're doing. Um, you know, I kind of like to avoid that as much as possible, but, you know, given the restraints that we have, and if the state comes up with more debt service aid or something like that, or project dollars, um, that's an avenue that we're going to be looking at in the future, there's no question. Uh, security, I put down, that's always, always a need. Um, you know, we have camera system that's starting to age, uh, and the technology is getting better, so we're trying to replace cameras each year. 
We're reviewing capital options for our doors and our exterior areas, always looking to improve security. Uh, very important in the public high school. Special education uh, is it's always tough. Um, classified students are legally here through age 21. Uh, out of district placements are significantly, the tuitions that we pay, um, eighty, ninety thousand dollars in, in some cases. So uh, that's a challenge, there's no question. And we do support our most vulnerable students, there's no question. Uh, we have an excellent special ed program here, um, but it's expensive. We are projecting seven new out-of-district placements coming from our uh, elementary schools. And on top of that, we have a decreasing amount of federal support through the IDEA grant. Uh, last couple of years, it has dropped a little bit. We're hoping it goes up, uh, but we are not encouraged. Uh, it looks like it's going to drop. They've told us to budget 85%. And again, I just wanted to point out the, the final item there, the strategic plan goals. It's something that we, we, we try to strictly adhere to, but there are costs associated with what the, the committees are talking about. Uh, we're going to try everything we can, uh, do everything we can to put those items in, but um, there are limited dollars, as, as I pointed out before. And I think that's about it. Anybody have questions? Any questions for Mr. Stiles? Seeing none, thank you. Moving on, we will go to our committee reports and we'll start with our first report on education. Mr. Mizio. And at the last board meeting, uh, Sandy had gone over a little, somewhat portion of the, our, the agenda of education sure. committee meeting from January 18th. I'm just going to go over everything that was discussed at that meeting, so maybe a repeat for, for most of you. Okay, we, um, we discussed park, and there will be a change in the scheduling of, of park this year, where now our, we had a decrease in the number of 11th graders taking the exam. So the, the splitting up the, the sessions, there will be two sessions for the 11th graders, and they'll be finished by mid-March. It's, it's two separate sessions. This way, they would, it would prevent burnout and hopefully get more 11th graders to take the exam. And also, um, the, the ninth and uh, tenth graders will take the exam after the AP exams. And some of the feedback we received with that was that certain subjects were taught, or certain, certain areas are taught after the exam. And hopefully the new schedule will change that and the teachers will have a chance to cover these topics before the students are tested on it. Online scheduling for rising 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. Ninth grade will still be paper. And last night there was a meeting with supervisors met with, with parents of 8th graders and they discussed um, courses, electives, uh, prerequisites, and future opportunities for their students. Uh, the program of studies, we will be, uh, I think tonight we'll be approving, uh, we'll be voting on four courses which will be added to the program of studies. And those courses are AP Italian, AP Computer Science Principles, Career Pathway STEAM, and Hip Hop Dance. You all should have received a description of those courses in your packets. We also discussed the German program. As many of you know, we, certain students were, were taking, uh, we piloted <coughs> online courses through Edgeseer uh, for German three and four. Uh, there was an issue with performance and uh, uh, whether completing the course, and, and the school was paying for the course. And it was discussed whether or not students should initially pay for the courses and then being reimbursed. Um, later on and we there'll be more details to follow on on that um, when they would be paying when they would be reimbursed so more to come on that and some we discussed the summer enrichment program for example incoming ninth graders may do a, a math program um, all the sending districts teach math differently and this would maybe be an opportunity to get everyone on the same page as, as far as that goes. Um, 
and uh, 12th graders, perhaps rising 12th graders could perhaps take a college application workshop. Tuition would need to be charged to pay the, the teachers for that, um, but we talked about maybe the board paying a portion of it and students paying a portion of it. So again, that's something we're, we're still trying to, to work out. Uh, let's see. We discussed a Canvas, which I had presented before, that uh, Canvas is a online management system and it's being piloted with the personal finance course. And we're hoping to expand its use with, uh, with, with sophomores and juniors and add more courses to it. If you all recall, the teachers, can, the teachers add the content to it and they can administer exams through Canvas. We had a makerspace update. That's something else that I had presented. It's just um, a space for students to meet and to work on what they're interested in doing. Um, perhaps, so, but we're looking at a for space right now, maybe, perhaps it would be in the library. Our administrators visited other programs to see how they're run, and we had a, a representative from Rutgers come in and look at our facilities um, in view to give us advice on how we could create a, a makerspace area. And we were told that we have the resources, and so we really we have a lot going for us already, so it should be a little easier to put together a, a, a makerspace program. And we're hoping that teachers would take advantage of it and use it to maybe in, incorporate it into their program and, and to uh, you know, help teachers, maybe help students maybe take a different avenue in, in their studies. And the, the kitchen, uh, culinary arts facility, that was approved. And um, I guess it's now you know, being used now, the kitchen for the culinary arts program. And in the past, we'd also discussed changing um, the, our program as we're working on a long-term construction plan. So there'll be more coming on that. College acceptances, as of this January 17th, we had 35 applications that were processed by our guidance department. And I guess at some point we'll get uh, a presentation on who was, how students were accepted and where they were accepted. There was, how many applications did you say? 3,500, that was as of January 17th. Why? What did I? You said 35. Did I say that? Oh, you know what, I think I, I was kind of. I became very concerned for on that. <laughs> 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 and that was it. And uh, oh, and also, I think you, you all received an email on February 1st from the superintendent concerning, concerning two proposed student clubs. Uh, they were not discussed at the education committee meeting. Uh, we had a long agenda. It didn't make it onto the agenda. But we'd like to get these clubs approved. So that's why an email was sent with the applications from the students. And hopefully we'll review them. So tonight, if anyone has any questions, we could discuss them and then have them on for approval at our next meeting. So any questions? Lisa, I do have, if you just wanted me to add some details on the college applications. Um, well, I, I don't know. If at the time, I did, if you feel, I <coughs> think that at this oh, point. Oh, that's fine. But you can. I don't know if anyone if, wants. If things had changed or. I guess but the one main thing is that 85% of the seniors had applied at that point to school. So of those right, applications. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. That's a good thing. Any other questions for Mr. Mizio? Mr. President, I would like to point, just to follow up on the comment that I made when I was in the budget presentation. This is a perfect example of the budget process where the board committees are involved. The education committee is discussing things that are in, in the strategic plan and also are being discussed during the budget process. Mm -hmm. So that's a great example of how the committees have really helped us out. Excellent. All right, moving on, next is personnel. Mrs. Fechner. First, you know, one of the main things we've done is um, we're reviewing policies, and several of our policies had to be revised uh, because of wording. We've had to add words, <clears throat> and the ones that we have, and we have one new one. These are all first readings. Um, second reading will be next meeting. Um, one of them is that's new would be. I mean, we have four of them here, and of course I'll pick up the wrong one to try to help. I suppose I put it over here to make sure. This is the one new one, and that's the board member review of applicants material. We all have received these within our blue notes, so I assume you've all read them, so 
I'm certainly not going to read the policies. So each one of them you'll see um, they've been revised, and any revision we have is done in a different, heavier print, so that it's very easy to see what the changes are. And they're not very big changes, but it brings us up to what we are supposed to have in our code. And as I said, the other one new one is uh, reviewing the applicants. And materials when they come, so that one will pay a little more attention because it's new. Other than that, we really discussed the um, agenda items for next week, and we went through a um, review of what we do with new uh, hires, new tenures, tenured faculty, staff renewal. We just reviewed for our own um, knowledge again. <coughs> so that's really where the policy is. And we didn't do anything that's going to cost you, Mr. Mr. Business Administrator. <laughs> <laughs> any uh, any questions from Mrs. Fechner? We discussed policies now. Do you want to wait until? Uh, why don't we do that as part of the discussion once it's uh, you know for Moved. review? Yes. Anything else? If not, I will move. We'll move to uh, operations. Yes, be Mr. Collins. Um, we discussed a couple of items: sustainability policies, which is continuing our path and our journey along becoming greener, cleaner, and uh, in the long term saving dollars. So that policy is uh, on our action item list tonight. Um, we spent uh, a good deal of time discussing what uh, the administration has been proactively doing is going out for RFPs uh, for all of our professionals so that we know that we're getting you know, continued uh, favorable pricing wherever we can find that or competitive pricing uh, wherever that may be. And uh, so three RFPs were sent, uh, only two were returned, one firm is too busy. So uh, we got two back and they were within, Tim ran a model based upon how many hours we engaged our firm this past year. And uh, given that they were within $1,000 of one another. Obviously in certain areas they were more expensive, in certain areas they were less expensive. So it came down to are we happy with the work that we're getting out of our present firm and it's the operations committee. Uh, recommendation that we continue with our, our uh, firm skank price. Uh, so that was the operations committee. Excellent. Any questions for Mr. Collins? Seeing none, we'll go to the communications committee, which is also Mr. Collins? Sure, why not? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, communications, we discussed uh, moving forward with the audit. So. Um, it's the recommendation of the committee that we move forward with the scope survey, which would be a supplement to the audit process. And of the four sending districts, Warren and Greenbrook are going to be uh, also administering a scope. Long Hill already did their own survey last year. Uh, and the committee is in support of moving forward with the audit, as I said. Um, the committee suggested including eighth grade students and parents in the surveys as well. So Superintendent Jewett will be discussing that with Coakley Communications. And uh, Tim uh, and the administration are uh, working on an RFP for our website. So uh, hopefully we'll be seeing that and uh, moving forward with that project that I am very interested mm -hmm. in. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. I have a comment here. Uh, this morning I opened up something from Watch and Borough. And I thought, oh, they're going to talk about the snowstorm, and I, well, that's what, and it wasn't that at all. It was the Watch on Hills newsletter, on and on and on. You know, I just kept, oh, if I need more time to read this, and it was photographs. It was a very in-depth report of what's going on for anyone who's not here at meetings or has youngsters there. But it came under Watch on Borough, so luckily I opened it. It was Liz's newsletter, it was right? Yeah, it was mine, yeah. but I, it's what I sent. I wonder if you have our email. That would be your computer. It's, has it's my our, computer. Has our, I don't mean to me, but has our email listed um, as Watch on Borough instead of, for whatever reason, our email address in yours must, because uh, that, yeah, that came from me. Oh, no, oh, you know what? You, thank, thank, thank you, Gary. Gary. You're right, Sandy, I stand corrected, because we send it to the towns, and they forward it to their mailing list as well. So you would have gotten it from me, because I sent it to the board, but right. the town oh, sent it out know, as well. No, I, okay. That's why. But thank that, you. That was a lovely thing, because this means everyone who's signed up Watch on Borough. Within the towns all, yes. And I'm and, glad they, they forwarded that. And That's I will great. pass along your comments to Dina, because she puts that together with me, but she's really instrumental in, in gathering all that information. She does a really nice job. And then we forward it to all the town councils, um, in addition you know, to our school community, the parents, the students, the staff, 
we send it to all four town councils um, and then Dina also sends it to each of the town clerks because then they forward it out to their email list so yes it was a one. wonderful suggestion to have the borough send it out because if you don't mm -hmm. have children in the school yeah, you, you're yep, not that was our thought. Well, yes. the school website right. so, Barry, thank you so yes you're right that's why it came oh, from that you were here Barry I thought it was and, my computer uh, <laughs> any other comments for Mr. Collins or questions yeah, for Mr. Yeah, Collins clarification with this um, proposal here with the audit now what happens now with the audit like where do we go it's because we're agree we're going to do it we're moving forward with it um, yes is there an RFP for that we're using this company it's or, under the quote threshold right, so, so you're in this company for mm -hmm. that and okay and then there's the survey what did I'm not sure what that is what is the scope survey maybe you can detail so that that's a um, that's something that they um, recently developed it's a quantitative tool that um, Greenberg and Warren are also going to um, to administer it as well but it gives them some additional data to utilize as part of the audit so it'll go that's that's the next step to talk to Sandy um, Coakley who's the consultant um, but that will go out to our communities okay. um, to get feedback from them which is really what we want in terms of um, you know I mean Sandy's simple comment is actually really helpful in terms of uh, you know how the types of information that folks are looking for folks who do have students in the schools folks who don't have students in the schools um, so that's what we'll get from that okay, thank you <coughs> any other questions from Mr. Collins if not um, the only other comment under committee reports is um, for our March work session, I'm hoping that we can have the Alternative Finance Committee uh, convene uh, for the purposes of reviewing the booster policy and reigniting the conversation around how we move that forward. Uh, also, that meeting and that committee is open to any other board members who are interested in participating in that process. Uh, I will certainly be making myself available for that as well. When so it, when we need that? to get that scheduled and uh, it's not scheduled. Mr. Oh, Stiles, it's not scheduled. Oh, okay. pardon me, Mr. It's not Stiles. Not scheduled yet, right? No. You no. Said? Okay. But I just want to make sure that uh, we have it on our radar screen that we want to have a report coming out for the, the next work session, the first meeting in March. So right now, um, the only official members of the committee um, are Barry and Glenn. Right. Um, so if you are interested in coming to that, just let me know, um, because then when we go to schedule it, Tim can reach out to, to those folks up to five who are interested. Um, so that way we can, so Rita, if you're that, you know, mm -hmm. good, we'll reach out to you. So yeah, we can, I'm interested. And Bob. Excellent. Okay, so that's four. So awesome. that, that allows, if there's one other person that does is interested in being there, just reach out to let us know. But we'll find a time that works. Great. Uh, we'll move on to board discussion. Uh, is there any discussion on the agenda items for this evening. Is it a future action item? Yes. Yeah. Seeing none. Um, communications. We just had an update from the communications committee. I don't know if there's anything else to be added to that. Um, excellent job. Excellent. Uh, strategic plan, you have some updates on that? Yes, so I will Stuart. share some, uh, some information on that. And actually, you know, as you'll notice, the strategic plan is kind of gets weaved into a lot of our, our committee reports, which is a good thing because that means that our, our committee work is aligned with the strategic plan. Um, but I can you know, give some additional updates on some of what the, the specific um, school-based committees uh, as opposed to the board-based committees are working on and the plan is um, as you'll recall in the fall we did have um, the entire administrative here team here presenting we're looking to do a follow-up in May where we will have um, we're, we're hoping to have some students and teachers come to actually talk about what they've done um, as part of all of this in terms of uh, and bring some artifacts to show you know in terms of the interdisciplinary learning some of the, the work that that has been done um, so just to give you an idea of what some of those um, school-based committees are working on we have the post-secondary planning committee um, who joined forces with all of the Somerset County school districts to send a survey um, to over 400 colleges uh, as you know one of the things that we've talked about a lot is our whole grading scale our course leveling um, what we put on our on our transcripts and our school profile because we want to make sure we're um, from number one preparing our students as best as we can for for post-secondary success but also marketing our students for for lack of a better term um, as best we can for college admissions uh, over 200 schools replied to that um, and that was part of the reason we joined forces with a whole bunch of other high schools because we're more likely to get responses from colleges 
they know it's coming to more than one school. Um, so they're in the process of, of analyzing that, and their next step is going to be to put together a report of recommendations, uh, which will likely go through Education Committee in terms of um, what they're uh, coming up with as any recommendations for um, changes to our grading scale, our course levelings, those types of things. So that's what they're working on right now. Um, with regard to STEAM-related opportunities, uh, we actually talked about some of those um, in the Ed Committee report. So we are obviously looking at redesigning our culinary arts program. We've begun expanding opportunities for coding. One of the summer opportunities we're looking at is perhaps a coding course. Uh, we also had our first ever hour of coding at Wachung Hills. Uh, we have now the Computer Science Club as well. The Makerspace uh, is all part of this, and we had some new electives on the board agenda tonight uh, related to the strategic plan. And one department meeting per month has actually been set aside for interdisciplinary collaboration, where um, to, because if, if obviously if we want the teachers to work with um, teachers in other departments, we need to structure some time for them to do that. So that's what they've been using the second department meeting of the month for, and um, that's what we will likely have some of them and some of the students come in May to talk about uh, some of the projects and the work that has come out of that. So uh, that you can stay tuned for. And actually, in the newsletter, there was a link um, to the action plans, which I will have all the uh, action team chairs update again. But if you go on there, uh, the original action plans are on there. But in the status column, it's updated with what has been done. And one of the other items we talked about in the newsletter, which is also uh, related to the wellness portion of the strategic plan, is our sustainable um, jersey for schools certification application, uh, which we're working on. And, and I highlighted the members of the green team on the uh, the newsletter it, it is quite a bit of work um, to actually do the application but it's been it's been a valuable experience uh, mr. Giuliano has been very involved because it's really causing us to sit back and take a look at what our current practices are and number one we're able to highlight a lot of the energy savings and and sustainable practices that we've implemented in recent years but it's also giving us a, a to-do list uh, to look at to prioritize for possible future work that we want to do um, so that's been another uh, nice, uh, you know, initiative that we've been working towards. Just so for me, uh, so I, I pulled up the strategic plan. So you're saying there's going to be another column that's going to have status? There, on it? there should be. If you go into, you need to. Are you in the Google strategic? The, the yes, I'm, where it says action steps, responsible deadline. Yes, yeah, so if you look on the side, it should say status all the way on the right. But it could be the view of the way you're. It's possible you're not, but there should be a column on the right that says status. Do you see a status column? This, <laughs> I'll take a look afterward. Okay. I'll see if there's right. one. That, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'll I'll because that I'll, I'll right. make sure Thanks. that that's on there. Uh, and the sustainable jersey application has actually been filed, correct? There's three application um, deadlines. Mm -hmm. So the, we submitted our initial. Um, our initial application, January 18th, I believe, is the first submission date. And anything that we believe we've completed, we can submit to them to get feedback on. Then there's another submission date in April and another one in June. So um, there's we still have a lot to do, but we, we are actually pretty well underway. Um, so we're waiting for feedback from the first submission because they will let us know which ones we can check off as done and what we still need to do work on. Okay. Great. Any, uh, any other questions for the superintendent as it relates to strategic planning? Um, could, is there any update on where we are with the, ex the development of the expected school-wide learning results? That is really, um, the target date on there is the end of this year to really get, kind of give what we've done to the board um, to work on. So that we're going to get feedback from all the different groups. Uh, but that's kind of a, I guess, more of a culmination activity to, uh, in terms of the timeline. We've looked at more the end of this year to start looking at that. But we do have feedback. I have, have been collecting artifacts from the different committees in terms of what they've talked about with regard to that. Okay. Great. Um, any, any items for future board discussion that anyone wants to get on, on, on the radar screen at this point? All right, seeing none, we can move on to action items. I'd like to move uh, items A1 through A7. Second. Second. All right. Discussion, please. Just, just a question for Mr. Stiles, and I apologize that I didn't ask it already, and that's A5 that we're voting on now versus A5 that we're going to be uh, voting on the next 
uh, meeting. Uh, in terms of LLD, obviously the estimate of cost <coughs> has been revised downward, I assume, based on experience. That's correct. Uh, comfortable with that number? It sort of looks halfway between what the actual and what the proposed was yeah. last year. No, we, we, went, we both went, uh, when I say we both, the, the BA and Greenbrook and I both went through the figures together. <coughs> we both feel very comfortable with okay. that. Thanks. Any other, any, um, other questions on items A1 through 7? Yes. Ms. Demizio? I'd like to discuss um, the proposed bylaw, uh, board member review of applicant materials. First, uh, bylaws, they guide ha how a board operates. Now, this proposed bylaw, I believe um, the board did request the administration draft something li like this in response to a couple of incidents that had occurred. I don't think that this is necessary. I, I don't support it. I will not vote in favor of it. I'm not opposed to the contents. I just don't believe it should be codified. This is how the board has been operating uh, for a number of years, in the last administration and, this admin and the, with the new superintendent. Um, it's just, I think, common sense. It's just a, a courteous way to operate. Um, I think that if a, a board member deviates from this that the code of ethics covers that and for example the last paragraph if a board member <coughs> were to contact a reference for an applicant I believe that would be a violation of the code of ethics and a, and a complaint could be filed I don't believe that it's necessary to have this in the board bylaws I believe it does tie the board hand board's hands I, I believe there are exceptions to this uh, under the last superintendent there were exceptions where the board I don't remember exactly the situation, but board members did um, review entire files um, in the in the office by appointment. Uh, so it's, it doesn't. It, there are exceptions to this. So I just don't think this should be codified, and and I just don't, I do not support it. Any other <coughs> discussion regarding any of the items A one through seven? Okay. Seeing none, do a roll call vote, Mr. Sines. Ms. Barone? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Ms. Demizio? Uh, yes to all except for the uh, bylaws 0136, no on that. Okay. Ms. Spector? Oh, I'm sorry, I have to abstain to A1 and A2. Apologize. Gotcha. Okay. Ms. Spector? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Martins? Yes. Mr. Batista? Yes. Dr. Yes. Shabilsky? Uh, yes, with abstention to A1, A2. And Mr. Morris? Uh, yes, with the exception of the uh, policy 0136 under A3. That's no. <coughs> okay. Motion's carried. Move to move items A8 through A11. Second. We have a second? Second. Okay. <laughs> Sleeping, guys. Any discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, Mr. Size. Ms. Barone? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Mizio? Yes. Mrs. Factor? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. Master Batista? Yes. Dr. Shabilsky? Yes. And Mr. Mark? Yes. Motion is carried. I'd like to move item B1. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Ms. Barone? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Mizio? Yes. Mr. Spector? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Mr. Martins? Yes. Mr. Mass Batista? Yes. Mr. Dr. Shabilsky? Yes. Mr. Mars? Yes. Mr. I'd like to move items C1 through C4. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Ms. Barone? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Mizio? Yes. Mr. Spector? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? Yes. Uh, Mr. Martins? Yes. Mr. Mass Batista? Yes. Dr. Shabilsky? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Motion is carried. I'd like to move items D1 through D3. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, roll call vote, please. Ms. Barone? Yes. Mr. Collins? Yes. Mr. Mizia? Yes. Mrs. Factor? Yes. Mr. Hunsinger? 
Yes. Mr. Martins? Yes. Mr. Batista? Yes. Dr. Shabilsky? Yes. Mr. Martins? <coughs> yes. Motion's carried. This brings us to the second opportunity for public comment. The public comment period may be open to uh, any item, whether it's on the agenda or not. Please come to the podium, state your name and the town you're from. Second opportunity for public comment. Okay. Seeing none, we'll move to other business. Does any of, any of the board members have any other business they want to bring up this time? Yes, I'm sorry, Dr. Shalowski. Exactly other business, but I just wanted to compliment uh, Ms. Jewett and, and the team on the AP Italian solution, sort of innovative ways of trying to partner with uh, universities locally to be able to uh, create more opportunities for our students than we can do internally. Uh, I thought it was a very clever way. And, uh, just want to commend you for that. Thank you, Dr. Shabelsky. And we're hoping we'll, we will get um, enough students. That, that's going to be the challenge, to get enough students to do that to then run the course. But at least getting it on the books gives it a little now momentum. So even if it doesn't happen next year, we have it there and can try and build it. So thank you. That's what we're trying to do. Um, the only other thing that I would like to just bring to the board's attention is Thursday night at Maggiano, 6 p.m., the Somerset County School Board Association uh, convening, and I think they have a special topic on special education, uh, which I think is very timely, and so um, you know, all of you are in encouraged and invited to attend, and certainly Ms. Jewett, if you want to send any of your team that would be interested in that, they can attend as well, so. We might need the sleds to get there. <laughs> we may need the sleds to get there. That is very true. <laughs> uh, seeing no other business, I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. So, so we, we, second. Second. Hey. Uh, Here you go. Either way it works.